Hey everybody, happy Tuesday, right? <laughs> Tuesday, I think, or is it Wednesday? I'm not sure. I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, boy, suddenly I couldn't remember. I know that it is day five of our 12 days of Christmas Facebook Lives. Um, and today I'm using one of my favorites from the holiday catalog, the Sweets and Treats stamp set. Now, this stamp set coordinates with these dies, the cloche dies. And if I'm not mistaken, these are 50% off, right? So if you, now there's a stamp set that also goes with this. Let me find them. Yep, that makes them $14.50. So if you were on the fence about this, because there's a coordinating stamp set that you can buy as a bundle. I should have pulled it out, but I didn't. Um, it is a little bit different. It's more of like a snow globe scene type imagery that goes in these. Um, but this coordinates as well. So if you were on the fence, or maybe you haven't gotten the dies, but you got the stamp set, the dies are $14.50. <laughs> so that's a really good deal. Um, I just checked the last chance list before I came on, and there hasn't been any changes from yesterday. Um, still, we have um, the Stitch Snowflake dies are sold out. Um, the Pink Ribbon and the Wonder Whimsy and Wonder Designer Series paper has sold out. But uh, as far as I am aware, let me post that. As far as I'm aware, that's all that's sold out. So those things are still available, the cloche dies. Um, so the other big news, if you haven't put in an order, or maybe you're like, oh, there were some other things I wanted to get on my order when I put it in. Well, I have really good news for you tomorrow. And I know it's backwards. You guys can read backwards. I should do it like this. You can see it through there. <laughs> Free shipping! Yay! Free shipping tomorrow. Sh shocker! Free shipping day in the middle of December. I don't think Stampin' Up's done that before. So uh, we were all pleasantly surprised. We all got an email yesterday in the afternoon that tomorrow will be a free shipping day. So your order has to be over $50. Like that's not easy to do. <laughs> and, uh, and then it ships for free. Now here's something I want to tell you guys. As you know, our world is crazy, right? Things are slow, things are delayed for various reasons, but right now our warehouse is a little bit behind, a few days. Um, orders that were put, uh, that were ordered during the big sale that we had in November took a while to get out because there were so many. Now, I don't know this for sure, but in my mind, this is what I feel like is happening. They are still catching up, trying to catch up on all that. So, so orders are a little bit slower to ship. Um, they have said December 13th was the last day to put in an order to get it by Christmas. That feels really late to me. <laughs> so if you want something for Christmas, I would say do it ASAP. Tomorrow, for sure, because they're gonna get a lot of orders tomorrow. So if you are needing something as a Christmas gift, um, make sure you get that order in, okay? Um, if you wait or if you decided you're going to make Christmas cards or treats or something um, and you need it faster than what you think it's going to get, they do offer expedited shipping. Um, I second day air my stuff a lot and it's an extra $20. Now, granted, I get it. That's pricey. But if you're desperate, it's an option, right? Um, I don't expedite shipping with anything else other than Stampin' Up because I use it, you know, my business and I need it and all that. But occasionally if I for some reason with my girls birthdays I always am like late and I have to expedite one or two things so most companies offer that there is next day shipping as well that's a little more pricey I think it's a $40 so it's up to you but they say December 13th doesn't that feel a little um I don't know I don't know I'd be, I'd be nervous if I waited that late to order um peaceful place designer series paper Heather I think that that paper and the Blackberry Beauty, it's not on the discontinued list. I'll have to check for you. I well, All I checked was discontinued list, which means Stampin' Up! has said, these things are not coming back. They are done. We're not getting another order. I feel like those two things are on the back ordered list. But, but don't hold me to that. I will double check and I will let you know. 
All I did, I didn't look at the back order list. I just went over to the discontinued tab to see what was discontinued. There's some things that are in other languages too that are in there and I just skimmed and pulled out the things that I could read. <laughs> and those are the three things. So I know that those paper are unavailable right now. They're not doing back orders anymore. So uh, they are making things unavailable, all right? Um, Patricia, I fixed that link this morning. It should have been working. Did you check it again since this morning? Um, <laughs> you guys, um, links have, have been a problem for some reason. I'm not sure why we're having some issues with the links in the last few days, but I'm trying my best, all right? <laughs> trying my best. Doing this every day is a lot. It's a lot of work and things fall through the cracks. So a little grace would be much appreciated. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to um, remind you of. I'm not going to go through everything. Um, oh, I know one thing I really need to remind you of is today's the last day to subscribe to this month's Club Create. Somebody commented on my calendar class page wanting to know if this came with a calendar. It does not. Those, these are two different things. This is Club Create. There is a PDF version of this that includes a video. Um, the measurements for this is in there. Um, that's in my PDF store. But if you want the kit, today is the very last day you can subscribe. Um, I will update this video with a link. There's also a tab at the top of my blog that says Club Create. Okay? That's the last time you'll see it. <laughs> I promise. Um, the second thing I want to tell you is that we have Paper Pumpkin deadline coming up on um, the 10th. So what is that? Friday? Yeah, Friday. And it's a pun. Lots of pun. Um, so it looks really cute. It says that it's a builder stamp set too, which looking at those images makes me think it's going to have the little eye stamps, little face stamps, maybe the little glasses, which makes me really excited. I don't know. That's just my guess. But if you want this, make sure you subscribe by December 10th. All right. All right. Okay. So that's all I was going to tell you today. Free shipping tomorrow. So I would encourage you not to put an order in today. <laughs> I never say that unless, unless you're like worried about deadlines and maybe you should put it in today because tomorrow there's gonna be a lot of orders. Um, but other than that, check the last chance list. The dies we're using today is 50% off. Yay. And um, if you like today's projects, if you like the cloche and the sweets and treats um, stamps, I actually had a class to go with this a month or two ago and there's a PDF available in my PDF store. Um, it uses both the Sweets and Treats stamp set as well as the, um, what's that stamp set called? Classic Cloche stamp set um, and the dies. So if you're looking for even more ideas, make sure you check that out in my PDF store. Okay, prizes yesterday. Um, there's a link at the bottom of my blog. You click it, it goes to the prize page. Um, you just fill it out. And I think yesterday's link expired early. I fixed it right away. It should be up, actually still live. Um, and all you do is fill in your information, answer a question. I picked one winner and it is Karen Ayers. She's getting the Frosted Gingerbread Bundle. Karen, thanks for, for entering to win. Today, I'm giving away two prizes. Two pretty pillow box dies. We used these yesterday to make the cabin box. So they don't have a coordinating stamp set. It's just the dies on their own. So I will pick two winners tomorrow. So make sure you click on that link at the bottom of my blog today um, and go enter to win. Um, let's see. Let's see, Terry. Um, Club Create, can you do it without the bundle? Well, if you can substitute stamps and it, we use that twig punch. So if you think you have things that could be subbed for that yeah you could um but that i'm just trying to think there are no dies um that coordinate with that stamp set just that punch um so yeah if you have if you have stamps that you think would coordinate then yes all right let's get started tomorrow oh hey wait forget hold on i posted this morning a host code for tomorrow um and it was the same host code that we used this last week but I realized I need to order some more prizes. So I'm closing that host code. Um, and I updated those posts with a new host code. 
If you use that host code anyway and it works, you'll still qualify for the free make and takes. But if it doesn't work, that means I've closed it and you'll just want to use the new one, okay? Um, $35 order minimum by um, Monday, next Monday at midnight. You'll get three of the projects I make this week for free. I don't know which three yet. I'll let you know as we get closer. Um, but um, $35 minimum on that host code. Um, if your order is over $150, don't use the host code. This is what they look like when they come to you, the projects. They're free. You need the stamps. Um, you'll need whatever dies or punches go with the stamp set. So today, if, if I include one of these projects, you'll need the cloche dies and the sweets and treats stamps. I don't do any stamping, okay? It's a little thank you card in there for you. But I do send everything that you need. And if it's like circles and rectangles and stuff, I do include those as well. Okay, deadline for that is Monday at midnight. All right, let me turn you guys around and we will get started. Today is one of my favorite kind of stamp sets. Um, it's a coloring stamp set. I get to use Stampin' Blends, which you guys know I love Stampin' Blends. So this one jumped right out at me. This stamp set is drawn in the style of stamps stamp set, <laughs> that, that's a tongue twister. the stamping style, um, the image style that I like with just an open black line um, with not a lot of detail, so it's pretty easy to color. So we're going to do that. Um, tomorrow is Be Jolly, the cute little fat Santas. They're so cute. So we've got that tomorrow. And then Thursday, Great Tidings. And Friday, there'll be no Facebook Live, okay? All right, well, let's get started. Let me clean off my space. Turn down the fan so the camera doesn't shake. It's finally cold here, but it's warming up. Of course, it's gonna get warm again. My mom and I are going Christmas shopping on Friday and the high is 86, which just kind of makes me mad. <laughs> I mean, come on, 86 in December, that's just disgusting. Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I need Christmas weather during Christmas time. Okay, so we're gonna make this card. Of course, I had to pull in the black and white um, gingham. If I can pick it up, my goodness, I can't get it up. My nails are like not functioning. Um, the black and white gingham paper, that is from the Pattern Party designer series paper pack that is free, one of your free options you can get if you spend over $150. I'm obsessed with it. If you're new around here, you, you know I'm obsessed with gingham, first of all, and black and white, especially. Um, I bought a pillow this weekend that was like this big and it's red and white gingham and it says jolly across and it has jingle bells on it. It's so cute. Anytime I see gingham, I, I have a hard time resisting. I really do. Okay, now did I, okay, good, here it is. So we're gonna do some stacked pies. And we're gonna stamp the cloche lid, the glass dome, if you will, on a window sheet. So it will kind of look like it's enclosed, right? In glass. Um, when you're stamping on a non-pour surface, a slick surface, um, something like this, you wanna use your stays on. Now, it stays on, does not mix well with Stampin' Blends, so don't use it with your Stampin' Blends, but you can use stays on. You can use stays on on any paper, um, but especially with um, window sheets and vellum, those kinds of things. I'm looking for my cleaner. Where did I put it? There it is. Um, I have said in the past I don't like the way stays on um, what stays on does to photopolymer stamps, I, I don't know. It just, it does something a little weird. So I always try to, I always try to clean my photopolymer stamps right away um, when I've done that. So we're going to set that over here, give it some time to dry, and then we'll do our other stamping, okay? I have got my blends real red. We've got Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, and... Nancy, eight degrees and snowing. Ooh, that sounds miserable. Miserable. My husband does work in Minnesota. He goes to Minnesota every about every other month. And he's always excited. It's going to be 10 degrees. I'm like, oh, gosh. I know you guys get sick of it. 
But for down, down here, that's kind of exotic to us. <laughs> Any kind of cold weather like that is pretty exotic. All right, so we're going to stamp the pie three times. And I'm switching to Memento Black because, again, you don't want to use stays on um, with your Stampin' Blends. So you just want to use that Memento. You can also use our colored inks with Stampin' Blends. They work really well um, with your Stampin' Blends as well. You get a completely different look when you use colored inks with your Stampin' Blends. Um, okay, the other thing I needed to stamp. So when you adhere a window sheet, you have to get really creative because obviously adhesive is gonna show through. So in a minute, when I adhere this down, I'm gonna put glue behind my stand and glue the bottom of that behind the stand. But up here, I needed to attach it some way. So I'll use a little mini dimensional up here and to cover it up, I needed something to put on there. So I'm gonna use the holly at the top of the, so we'll just stamp that right there and then we'll just cut it out. Uh, again, there are dies that coordinate with this. It's the cloche dies, but you'll notice the only thing that that cuts that uh, it cuts out is this the dome. Um, fortunately, there's no dies for the other the other little cute things. But fussy cutting, uh, you know, it's pretty easy. Pretty easy. All right, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for. Uh oh, nope, that didn't work. Oh no, it did something. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. Um, I'm gonna color these pies. I've actually colored them already ahead of time. So I'm only gonna color one. That way you guys don't have to sit here for a while because this is you know, kind of a lot of coloring, but I do wanna show you how I'm gonna color it. I'm gonna color the pie tins three different colors. This one's real red. And I'm gonna use the bullet end of my Stampin' Right mark. I mean, my, whoa, not Stampin' Right, my Stampin' Blend. I'm gonna fill it all in with light, real red. I'm not seeing any comments. I have to keep tapping it to see comments. Is there a plastic film sheet on the cutting board? Yes, Diana, there is. There is a cutting sheet or a plastic film on the cutting board. If I remember correctly, you guys jump in and correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a long time since I bought my trimmer. She's talking about the Stampin' Trimmer. Is there a plastic film, film that you peel off? I'm gonna say yes, I do believe there is. But again, I've had mine for several years. All right, now, light crumb cake for the top of the pie. And I'm gonna do, again, just a full coat in crumb cake. Yep, Cindy, yep, okay. Cindy says, rip it right off. <laughs> you know, Cindy, that was my initial reaction too. But then I was like, ooh, am, am I, what if I'm wrong? And then I tell her that, and then, you know, you just start get second guessing yourself. Yeah, okay, everybody's like, yes, yes, yes. Ooh, and that's so satisfying to peel that stuff off. We have a refrigerator that's relatively new. I mean, within like maybe two years, maybe three even. And we keep, we still keep finding the plastic film in areas that we can peel off. And my kids get all excited and we fight over who gets to peel it off. <laughs> it's the weird little things that get us excited. All right, now I took my dark sand and blend and I went around along the, the inside of that crust there. And I'm taking my light and I'm just blending it up. We want the top to be the very lightest. And I used the dark also to color in those little pie holes. Now you'd wanna to continue to do that, Granny Apple and Daffodil Delight, but I'm not gonna do that because I already did it ahead of time. Now for the tray, the stand, you can color it any color you want, but I just kind of always tend to think gray, like it's silver. So I'm gonna do a light gray, uh, not gray granite, which gray granite would work, but I'm using Smoky Slate, okay? Light, smoky slate, it's gonna all blend in. It's gonna do some magic, and I'm gonna see any marker lines. I'm gonna take my dark, and I'm gonna go just around the edges there, because those 
would be creating a shadow underneath that, um, that under part of the stand. Okay, the last thing that you want to color is the holly. And I'm just going to color that in with Granny Apple Light. And get my Granny Apple Dark. Put a line there like that. And then Dark Real Red. All right. And there you have it. Now you're going to want to fussy cut. And fussy cutting, you want to use your small scissors. And I always say stay on the outside edge so that you have a little white edge around it, okay? So I've already cut these out. We've got our granny apple, daffodil, and real red, and our holly, all right? I have ahead of time cut out a basic white banner. This is from the um, stocking dies, you know, the little dog and cat and guinea pig that sit in the stocking, those dies. And I embossed it with um, the Tasteful, Tasteful Textiles Embossing Floor. <laughs> I never can remember the name. It's on the supply list. Tasteful, text tasteful Textiles, I believe is the name. All right, now we're gonna put this on with dimensionals, but you know what, hold on. We gotta cut out before we do that. Hold please. Let's back up a step. We move these. We need to cut out our cloche dome real quick. The one we stamped over here in window sheet. So let me rearrange everything. Bring this guy over here. Your um, dies will cut window sheets, no problem. Line it up at the top and the bottom. You guys, yesterday, right about the time I was done with Facebook Live, the construction crew out in front began to, you know, they dug up all the asphalt and they dumped rocks, filler, I guess, there, and they began to flatten it. And for two hours, my house vibrated like something you have never heard. My dogs were terrified. Everything on my walls were rattling. I was thanking the Lord that it didn't happen during Facebook Live because you guys would have definitely heard it. It was the weirdest sensation. It was just a, a high, kind of a high squeaky vibration and the things on the walls were 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 kind of rattling. It was bizarre. And I, I looked out and all they were doing was rolling, you know, one of those roller vehicles that has like the roller on it. And they were just going back and forth and back and forth. But what, for whatever reason, that caused our house to vibrate for at least two hours. It was bonkers. Poor Pepper, she was terrified. All right, so I've put a little bit of glue See if I can do this without making a huge mess. I put a little bit of glue there underneath. Now, I shouldn't have taken that off yet. You know what, hold please. Hold please. I really just need to sit here and hold it, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, let's see where we need to put our pies. We're gonna stack our pies and you have to get you kind of have to get, you have to tuck them down in behind each other. All right, let's make sure. Is that going to be good for right there? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to use dimensionals. And to get them to fit under the dome, you really do need to tuck them down behind the one in the front, which means you need to put your dimensional down there at the bottom of your pie. Okay. It's like I'm talking to no one. I have no comments until I tap it. Um, Robin, that's interesting. You think it vibrates the material so they settle? Well, that would make sense. It just looked like they were rolling it, you know? I mean, not with a hand roller, but with a little machine. But man, out of everything that they did yesterday, including breaking up all that concrete, 
That was the most noisy, disturbing part. All right, so let's see, how does that look? So our pies are all kind of like wonky. That's how we want them, kind of stacked, you know, this way and that. And then we'll cover up that um, mini dimensional with our holly. Okay, like that. And now let's put our card together. I brought in two, these dies, these are the, um, they're on my other tray. The cooking dies, cooking not uh, with an apostrophe, <laughs> not a G. The cooking dies, um, they are great, and they are a great um, companion to this set as well. Um, to include those, all those little, those little tools, your kitchen tools. Uh oh, it looks like I am um, frozen. Okay, good, I am froze. All right, so we're gonna put that. I cut that out with a stitched rectangle, but. You can hardly see the stitching, so I think you could probably just cut a rectangle with that. Okay, we'll put this up here, like that. And then we'll stamp our sentiment in real red. It says, bring on Christmas. Now, in order to get these to fit, I had to cut my spatula down, make it a lot shorter, okay? So, oh, the neighbor's pulling out his trash cans. Can you guys hear that? Oh, very loud. You can probably hear me too. Um, we're gonna see how I shortened it and overlapped it. And then we'll put this kind of, Charlie, just go outside and bark. We'll put that there, and then we'll put, whoops, we don't want it upside down. We'll put that like that, okay? So you can't see that I shortened it, and it still fits. Well, if I do that, you can. <laughs> Let me cut it off a little bit, because it is sticking out at the top. And we will line that up. You know why? Because... We can, there's no adhesive there. So let's put that right there. And now it's gonna be in place. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is put on some twine. All right, and look, I put those a little bit too far over, but whatever, we're gonna keep it. They really ideally should be meh, a little bit further over. The other thing that I was gonna do, and we're gonna have to let this dry, so we'll come back after our next project. Let me get my grid paper. I'm gonna take my basic white twine and I'm gonna color it red with my Stampin' Blend. Have you guys ever done this? You can color your twine and your ribbon with your Stampin' Blends. Um, you can also do it with your out your uh, ink refills. Why can't I get this situated? Come on. There we go. And you just run this over it several times if it will just behave. There we go. And it will dry. It's going to take a few minutes though because I'm putting quite a bit on there. So that way, if you have white twine, you can do any, you can turn it into any color you want. One more, hold on, I'm missing the middle right here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let that sit and dry and we'll come back and add it to our card when we're done with our next project, okay? But for the most part, there we have it. Oh, that was loud. Okay, now let's move on to our 3D project. While we wait for that to dry, let me move these over here. And gotta clean up all the dimensionals. Otherwise, my desk is gonna look like a big mess. Come on, over, 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 there we go. Okay, next, we're gonna make a box for Anything you want. I mean, it could be a cookie. 
at Target, they have some great treats. Um, our Target is a super Target, and it has, um, up in the grocery area, it has iced cookies that are individually wrapped. Those would be good in here. But what I am using is one of the pretzels that look like this. Back in the Christmas section, they have a bunch of their Wonder Shop brand um, little treats like this. I think they're all like a dollar. Um, and it's just something different and cute. So we're going to make a little slider box for that. All right, so let's make our box first. Um, do I need, I don't think I need my cut and emboss machine anymore, so I can make that and make some more room. So let's see, where did I put my Simply Scored? All right, and I need my notes, which are missing. Do you guys see my notepad? Is it just sitting here? Oh, it's under my iPad. Thanks. I'm glad you guys like it. Um, they do have cute cookies, Lisa. Very cute. All right. So this is six and three fourths by seven and a half, real red. We're going to score it at three and a, uh, three fourths and one and a half on all four sides. So three fourths and one and a half on all four. Okay. Then we're going to get a piece of thick basic white right here. And we're going to score this. Let me look at my notes at three fourths of an inch, four and five eighths, five and three eighths and nine and a fourth. All right. This is kind of a matchbox type box where it has like the little drawer that slides out. All right, burnish all your lines. Okay. And then we're gonna do what I call our Tetris cutting where we cut out little Tetris shapes. <laughs> Basically, you're gonna cut out the L right there, the three uh, squares in every corner. And when you do cut this long one at an angle like that. So you're just cutting in a little bit on each of those. Okay. All the way around. Oops, I should have cut that in like that. Cut like that. And one more. So, whoops, I just knocked all those on the floor. So there's your piece for now. That's what it looks like. Now you want to take these right here and cut in. All right. And you can cut these at a little bit of an angle as well. These little square tabs. Um, you can cut in from the ends or the sides. It doesn't matter. But it, whichever you decide, it has to be the same. So if you cut this way, then you have to cut that way up here as well but I'm just gonna cut in from the ends. Okay, one more. Like that. All right, and there's your box. That's what it looks like. I think I'm gonna go eat the easy way today and just use stamp and seal on these. I'm putting that on the outside of each of those square tabs. And before I adhere them, I'm also going to put adhesive on the inside of all four of the outside tabs. All right, so then we're going to take these and fold them in, matching edges. Like that and like that. And then you fold these down and that gives your box a really nice and neat edge and it just looks really nice, okay? So there's your little drawer. Let's see, I thought I, yep, here it is. There's your pretzel. All right, so now let's burnish our thick basic whites. And this one's easy. All you're going to do is take your adhesive, put it on the outside of one end, and then fold that 
over the end like that so that you have just your little slider part, okay? Now I'm gonna use the Real Red Ruffled Ribbon. There's another tongue twister for you. Say that real fast five times. Real Red Ruffled Ribbon. And we're gonna tie a bow up here at the top. Like that. All right, I used way too much ribbon. And then it just slides into the box like that. And they can just pull it out like that. Like a glove. Okay, so now let's decorate it. I am using the Heartwarming Hugs designer series paper and I'm going to mat it on a piece of real red. Um, we are going to, this time I also, let's see, I'm going to put a strip again of my favorite gingham from the party pattern party designer series paper. Let's sniff off, snip off those ends. Now we're going to do the fruit cake stamp, which I think is just adorable. I just used it. I think it's probably the cutest one. Well, I don't know, the candy apples. Oh no, they're all cute. I can't pick one. All right, now the fruit cake, you know, I don't know. You can color it however you want, obviously. I'm just gonna put little red and green, you know, the little fruits down here, granny apple and real red. And then the color that I think looks the best down here as the cake is cinnamon cider. So color your candies in first, or your fruit, I guess they're fruit. And then grab your cinnamon cider, light, and just go real slow because you don't want to color over your candies. I'm using the bullet end. And we're gonna go all the way around. And underneath this icing, be very careful because you don't want to get up in there. Okay. Now, do you guys prefer to use the brush end or the bullet tip end of your Stampin' Blends? I mean, I am for sure the bullet end. I hardly ever use the brush end. I use the brush end when I have big spaces to color in. But what do you guys prefer? I'm interested to know. Now, I'm gonna take my dark, and again, I'm gonna go right under that edge of the icing, like that, so it looks kind of like a shadow. Okay, get your granny apple. Color your holly leaves. Bullet, yeah, brush, oh yeah, brush. Bullet, brush, hmm, we have, we have all kinds of preferences, interesting. It just depends on what you are comfortable with, I guess. Okay, so there you go. Oh wait, there's one other thing I wanted to do. Take your wink of Stella and wink your white icing. <laughs> is wink is wink a verb? Wink it up. Brush on that glitter so that that icing looks delicious. All right, and then cut it out. I also stamped and colored another one of our stands. All right, so I did that ahead of time. And we'll put that on here. This is the um, seasonal labels, largest shape. And we're gonna put that right in the middle. Just cut from a basic white cardstock. And a little stand. I can't tell if that's in the middle like that. It looks like maybe it's a little bit over. 
There we go. And then I have the little skinniest label cut. And the, the sentiment I'm using is from a different stamp set, Banner Year, which is a great set. Um, this carried over from our spring catalog last year, year before, I think it was last year. And uh, it's a great one. And I like this Be Merry sentiment. This stamp set has a lot of non-Christmas sentiments in it, which means um, you can use this throughout the year, not just for Christmas. Um, where is my stamp set? Let's see. It's um, any way you slice it, I'm thankful for you. That's cute. Love you. That little heart. Um, a tasty treat for someone sweet and happy birthday. There's only one Christmas sentiment on there, which is bring on Christmas. And since we are doing 12 days of Christmas Facebook Lives, I felt the need to use a Christmas sentiment. All right, so we're gonna put that on with dimensionals if I can get it centered. And then last but not least, some red rhinestones. Do I have my, I do not, where did it go? I don't know. My take your pick tool is never where I want it. And I really need it for this. Is it hiding? Oh, it is, it's here. It's here, I just didn't see it. We're gonna put a red rhinestone there and a red rhinestone there. <laughs> I've got quite the blob there, um, right there. Okay, and then we shall add a few more dimensionals. It seems like maybe the box was easier today than the card. Like that, a little bit of adhesive on the back. And let's put it on our box. Ta-da! Pretty easy. I think that would be easy to do a bunch. Have you guys seen those pretzels? They have the cutest stuff. I bought several things that I don't think I'm gonna get um, get to. There's even these plaid, red and black plaid coffee cups that have the lid that have hot chocolate in it. Um, and it's a dollar, which would make a really cute, you just make a tag, stick it on there, it would be really cute. So if you haven't, hit up Target. It was in their Christmas section. And again, you can, this box is a little bit bigger than the pretzel, so you could fit other things in there. You could put candy, whatever you want. All right, let's go back over here to this. And I really didn't do a very good job coloring my twine, but we're gonna go with it. It needed me to do it a few more times, more steady than what I was doing. But just know that you can color your twine with your Stampin' Blends, and you have twine in any color. Kind of looks like candy cane twine on this one. <laughs> and that's cute too. Okay, that's it. What do you guys think? Do you love the stamp set as much as I do? I really, really love the stamp set. This may be one that I don't ever get rid of. It's really good. Don't forget that those coordinating dies, the cloche dies, are... $14.50, which is super duper cheap. And tomorrow is free shipping. Um, if you put in your order tomorrow and it's over $50, you'll get free shipping. Make sure you use the host code um, and I will send you the projects for free. Not necessarily these, but it'll be three from either today, tomorrow, Thursday, or Monday. It'll be one from several of those days. And I'm trying to think if there's anything I need to tell you. I don't know. I think that's it. Okay, you guys have a wonderful afternoon. I'll be back tomorrow at two o'clock with Jolly Santa. Bye guys. Thank you.